Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's Synchromatic Transparent Watercolors. These are the Radiance, from the Radiance line. Um, this is the art student set here that I'm using, and the Synchromatic Radiant Colors are kind of the clearest of the clear. They um, uh, are super transparent, and I wanted to do something different today, so I thought I would give these a try. Sometimes I find that if I am um, looking to just kind of... I don't know, if I'm, ha if I'm having like a creative block, I try something new and that so tends to get me out of it. And um, I decided I would do some lilacs. I had done some lilac sketching and watercolor and I wasn't really happy with what I had come up with, but um, my friend Cinnamon Cooney, the art sherpa, said that my lilacs looked wonderful and I really ought to do a tutorial on them. So I decided, <laughs> thanks to Cinnamon, that I would do that. So I'm just going to kind of sketch on... Um, a few lilac flowers really, really lightly. Lilacs are very kind of spiky looking, and I thought I'd kind of have them um, kind of as if they're growing uh, from a tree rather than have them in a vase just for something different again. I usually paint them in, you know, mason jars every year, but I figured, you know, I think I'll just do something a little bit different. I've I was just kind of in a rut, so <laughs> I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to sketch on some of these little heart-shaped leaves, some of the spiky balls of um, of flowers, and just kind of go from there. Um, I think I'll draw a little bit darker than um, what I really need, just so you can see it, but really I'm not doing anything too earth-shattering here, just getting some, getting some shapes, and I want to have a few little leaves over here, I think. There we go. Okay. Um, so now I think what I'm going to do is actually randomly spray my paper. Because I really think that um, it'll be fun to work with these paints kind of in a very loose fashion. So I need to grab a brush. So prepared. <laughs> and I think I'll use this number eight round. This is a Majestic. Um, just rinsing it off. And I'm going to grab, I've got a bunch of different colors here from the Radiance line. I'm just going to start painting some of them in loosely. Just doing dabs. So my stem's coming up like this. So all my little dabs, I'm going to want to kind of come off from the edge. And since I wet the paper, I know it's going to kind of go... Um, hither and yon and I'm totally fine with that. These are really bright and they said the synchromatic is probably like the least vibrant of all the um, peach Martin colors so I thought that was kind of cool. Needs to be a little bit more purpley I think. Definitely um, more vivid than your typical watercolors because I think because they're, they're like completely transparent. Now the thing about the radiant colors that you really should be aware of is that they are more fugitive. Um, they're a dye base versus a pigment base, so they're going to um, tend to fade. Kind of if you think of like if you're a rubber stamper and you think of um, stamping ink versus um, like if you think of your dye base stamping ink versus your uh, pigment stamping ink, the pigment ink is uh, more permanent because it's made with, you know, pigment versus dye ink, which is made from dyes. So, but usually your dye ink is more vivid and more, the colors are more brighter and, um, and transparent and your dye inks are more richer and muted. So it's the same idea with watercolor paints. But I, as I mentioned before, I felt like I just wanted to kind of practice and have some fun and try something different and break out of a little crate of rut that I've been having. So this definitely um, fit the bill really well for me. Okay, now I also want to get some kind of some background colors in here. I'm going to switch over to a Neptune. Add some, wow, holy moly, that's bright. That is so bright! Holy cow! This is yellow ochre here. I have some lemon yellow. Um, like I said, just playing with color. These are super, super vivid. I actually used these on that cow painting. Um, I was doing it in, in ink and then I decided to... Um, 
Yeah, look at that, it stains too. So that's one thing to think about. Um, because the the radiance is typically would, would have been used for photo tinting a lot. So I thought, well, that'd be perfect because I was doing a black and white illustration and then I just tinted it with the, uh, with the radiance. It worked really, really well. Um, so you do have to be careful that if you, you don't want to let it kind of sit on your paper too much or you are going to get get some staining there. I have gutter people working on my house so it might get a little get a little noisy. Now I got this cadmium yellow I wanted to try out too. A little bit um let's go back to that big brush. Wow. So, so vivid, holy cow. Even with that, even mixing with that purpley blue, it's still giving me a green. I'm surprised, I would think it'd be more muddy, but it's really a lot harder to muddy up. Um, harder to muddy up colors that are so transparent. Fun to play in though. I'm having a really fun time playing in this in this paint. Let's do a little that green and see how it goes. I feel like I want to knock it down with a little yellow ochre. That's a little bright. All right, maybe a little bit more of this pink on there, and I'm gonna hit it with a little salt to get some of that cool lilac texture. So let's do that. I got some kosher salt right here, and I don't know how this is gonna work because this uh, paint is staining. I don't know if it's going to give me the effect that I usually like with this lilac salt there, but we shall see when it dries. Okay, here is the um, the background dry, and you can see here the salt has left these little starburst designs. It didn't push back to the white of the paper, I think because of the dyeing, uh, the staining effect of the Radiance dye watercolors, but I did also want to show you um, this one I did with like my Lucas watercolors. You can see when I did the salt, it kind of did push it right back to the white paper because that's a pigment color versus a um, a dye color. These, these watercolors, actually what I'm kind of excited about, not so much for the painting on on paper because um, they are not light fast but actually doing this on fabric because they are color fast on fabric if you use a soda ash bath on it so um, I think that will be some really fun effects um, using that to dye fabric but anyway you can obviously use these as watercolors and um, they are watercolors I just thought this would be kind of a really fun technique so now I want to get some definition I think I'm actually going to go in and do the leaves first and I'm using a three quarter inch angle I'm gonna grab some of this cad yellow on my brush. It's kind of weird working with the liquid, um, the liquid paints. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this green here, and I'm just gonna paint in some leaves. It's kind of fun. I might need to get a little bit more of the um, of the paint, or actually maybe even mix. Let cerulean grab a little bit more of this. When I'm using the paints, I stand them upright in my palette so I know what colors I've used already, so I don't go grab like a green that I haven't used. Just a little, a little tip for you there. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the cerulean and that green. Again, this is the art student set that I'm using. Just want to give it a rough start to that leaf, just so that it looks like the, the flowers are kind of overlapping there. Pretty colors though. Um, so I get like a lot of people asking, a lot of people asked for a review on these paints and like what the difference is and um, the big difference obviously being that the um, the Doc Martin uh, Hydras are water, they're both watercolors but the Hydrants are light fast and the Radiants are not but since the Radiants can be used as fabric dye that's probably what I'm going to end up using those for. Um, the radiants are also more vivid. The radiants are going to look a lot different than your traditional watercolors and the hydras look more like regular watercolors because they are pigment based. Um, and they do come in sets but you can also buy them open stock so you might actually do better to buy them open stock just because then you can custom cherry pick the colors that you want and um, the colors that you'd actually 
would use. I'm going to grab a little bit more of that yellow and a little bit of the green. I'm just kind of putting in some some one stroke type leaves here and a little green, a little cerulean blue. We do. I'm just kind of cutting into the flower there just so I have a rough edge where the leaf starts. I'm just pulling out. I feel almost like um like it's doing kind of like calligraphy because you're um it working with these it feels very much like I'm working with an ink. And I, it's really, it's really kind of fun, actually. Okay, I think maybe just do one more, use up a little bit more of this color. We'll do one more leaf over there. Look at that heart-shaped leaf in there. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my number eight round, and I'm going to grab some brown. I'm going to grab some burnt sienna because I know I can darken that up with a little bit of ultramarine blue, and I already have that on my palette. Um, another challenge is that when you're when you're painting with them, it can be very difficult to see what color you're using because. Um, oops, that's a purple. Um, because they're so transparent that when I put them in my palette I can't really tell <laughs> what the color is sometimes. I'm just kind of figuring out my composition as I go along. Just my, my goal is to have it kind of loose and I don't know if I like that bleeding like that. I think I'm gonna blot that. Now you can let these dry in your palette and reconstitute them with water later. That's totally fine. And that burnt sienna is staining, so I am going to end up with some of that color in there. I'm going to go back to that round brush I just had and do some... Um, is that the purple? Those two colors look very similar. Um, do some details here on the top of the lilacs. Um, these are much darker than actual lilacs. lilacs as you probably um, can see. <laughs> I'm just going to put in some darker colors and let a lot of the color underneath the show through. The impression of summer. I didn't expect these to be so dark because they did say the synchromatic uh, colors are um, not as dark as the as the um, other radiance, so that was very interesting. These are still extremely dark um, as far as I'm concerned. These are the um, like these, the regular radiants say radiant right on them, and they're pretty clear. Sometimes you will see a little bit of a murk in the bottles, um, a little bit of opacity. These are like, I mean, look at this, look how clear. I mean, these are like extremely crystal clear. So, um, and these say synchromatic on there, even though they are the radiance colors of synchromatics. Um, supposedly are not as vivid, but holy moly, I think they're awfully darn vivid. <laughs> And you can thin them down with a little bit of water, which I think I'll do here because so, so bright. And I don't want to cover up too much of my, um, uh, uh, the pretty salt effect either. I like that, so. I like the way they run together. They're they're very fluid. They're a lot more fluid than your pigment paints because the the particles are dye based. They're smaller. They're they're gonna run. They're gonna go. So again, I'm gonna leave some of that there. Maybe define a little bit on the on the bottom of the flower just to give it a little bit of an edge. But I really don't want to take away the the um, the sparkle that that gave it. That the salt gave it. I want. I would love it if you tried that technique. I mean, I know a lot of you have. It's a pretty common old technique. I remember. I mean, this is how I always painted lilacs when my art teacher showed me that when I was a little girl. Um, so you probably tried it, but it's such a nice, fun technique to to revisit every so often. It's also a great way to do snow. Um, you could use it in ocean scenes to get some foam and splatter um, on the water. I think the key is to kind of keep varying your colors and you can mix your different shades of purple with like magentas and ultramarine blue and, and that as well. 
using what you have is always a good thing. And let's see, I'm gonna just gonna tip it so you can see what it's how it's looking. Sometimes the glare can get a little bit a little bit extreme. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the this is the magenta because I am all out of that. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see me use this on some fabric. I'm kind of um, I'm kind of curious to try that. Oh, furnace is on. Furnace is on and we've got people installing gutters. We're gonna have a little bit of a noisy time today, I'm afraid. Hope you don't mind. I'm just gonna keep on painting this little section here and then um, I will pause it so we can let the furnace run its course. It's actually a little bit chilly today. It's uh, it's not even 70 yet, I don't think. I'm, I'm a little chilly down here. Definitely not 70 in my studio. Whoops, that was brown. See, that's, that's the, the thing. It's difficult to tell what colors you have if you're using a little palette like this. I probably should use a, use a plate, a white plate or something, so I could see a little bit better. So I'm going to pause it, um, and, we, and I'm going to tip it so you can see it in the light. We'll come back when it's dry and work on the leaves. So I had an idea after um, after I turned the camera off, and I thought, why don't I go and grab some of my Hydrus watercolor white, and see if if I paint that on top of these, if I can bring back some of the light, and if it would um, pick up the color underneath, and it does. So yeah, I'm glad that worked out um, because the color underneath is water soluble. This white watercolor is actually kind of mixing in with the underpainting and giving me the kind of that lilac look and if I hold it there you can kind of see so I thought well that's kind of fun let's mix media this up maybe we'll add some stamping to it who knows this will be fun we're doing like a little mixed media workshop here I can go right over that uh, leaf there <laughs> where the uh, the red just kind of flowed into that so I kind of thought that was kind of cool because this is such an intense color that by tapping on the white I actually get to pull back and see the actual colors that I had put down because they're almost, sometimes when you have something that's so transparent it gets, it, it's just too dark. It's like in the palette how we can't see what the color is because it's so transparent. Um, that's kind of what I was actually experiencing here on my paper so I thought well this is a great way to, uh, to kind of remedy that I think. Of course, you don't have to do it. I just thought, you know what? We're experimenting. I'm going to have fun. I'm trying something different. And yeah, why not? Put a little bit more down here. I did not thin the white down, just so you know. It's kind of it's kind of almost a consistency of like um of like a, a cream, like a light cream or something. Coffee creamer. And again, I don't want to get, I don't want to cover up the sparkle, so I'm being a little uh, conservative in these areas. But this is just a, a way for those colors to kind of come to life a little bit. Kind of fun. All right, I'm not sure how much I want to do with that, so I am going to just let that sit for now. And I think I want to throw in a few more leaves. But I think I'll do it with a round brush just so I have a little bit more control here. And let's see, where's my cerulean? Um, I think that was cerulean, but it's all mixed with green now. <laughs> just throw some of that in there. And just throw in a leaf right there. And I'm just kind of building this little scene. I think the lilacs are almost all gone by. I still never got any picked this year, which is such a bummer. I love the smell of lilacs, but it's been uh, it's been a busy uh, it's been busy. I don't have a lilac, but she tried to grow one once, but it never it never took off, unfortunately. I had some glazing shadows. I did put, I stopped the camera, put a little more green in there and some more cerulean. So I can really get some shadows in there. I'm not being too fussy with anything. I mean, oh, that's some purple. Let's see what that does if I put that. Oh yeah, that's really, that's really dark if I put that in there. Uh, I'm just trying to keep my colors, keep enough contrast in these so that 
they're interesting because I did kind of get myself too dark. I do have that problem. I often get myself too dark when I'm doing lilacs and that definitely happened here so I just need to kind of adjust values. But all in all, I'm, I'm pleased with how it's coming out. Let's smooth, whoops, too much water on my brush. Smooth that. With a damp brush, you can drag your paint around quite a bit. There, that's kind of cool. Um, I feel like I do want a few little just kind of lost and found branches, so I'm going to dry my brush off and grab the burnt sienna and just kind of throw in a few little branches here and there. It does. I think I need to darken it a little bit. Grab some of that ultramarine. Just add some little branch. Sorry if I'm mumbling. I feel like I'm just like really having a mellow mumbly day. <laughs> There we go. And now I'm just going to kind of chill out for a minute and think about things and see what else it needs. I think I might want to add a little stamping to it or something, but I'm going to stop and think about it for a minute. Okay, I decided I wanted to do some stamping and a little bit of collaging on here. And I've got some mulberry paper. And what I'm going to do here is actually just put a little light mulberry paper up here and put a little darker green mulberry paper down here and a little tip I want to share with you and I think I've shared it before but in case I haven't um, use a wet paintbrush just to kind of um, draw the line you want to tear on your mulberry paper and then you can tear and get that beautiful uh, deckled edge I'm sorry if I'm a little out of breath I just, <laughs> just ran upstairs to get this um, and I think you know I think I want to I don't want to have that go all the way to the edge, so I'm going to get rid of this rough edge there. And I don't recommend doing that right over your paper, but I just wanted to show you. There we go. I ran upstairs because I wanted to get my um, uh, Chalky Finish Mod Podge. I just mentioned this to some folks on YouTube the other day. I really like this stuff. It is super matte. Like, you won't even... It, even more matte than matte medium. It's like you won't even... You won't even see that that it's on there if I go out you have no you'll get no snail trail from this stuff it's really awesome um, and I don't know I think you can probably find it at most craft stores and I'll just trim off any any extra stuff like that um, but it's it's just it's wonderful it's even more matte than matte medium I think and I think it's cheaper because it's a Mod Podge product versus like a, a you know an artist gel and again, just giving myself a nice kind of random rough piece here. I think this mulberry paper was from the dollar store like ages ago. Um, but you know, you basic stuff like that. It doesn't go out of style. It doesn't go bad. So I totally recommend picking up stuff like that when you find it. I don't like how square that is. So I'm just going to try to tear it into a little bit of a more triangular shape. I like that. Going again with my... With my Mod Podge, you have to watch your brush and make sure that if it's picking up any, I can't believe it's not picking up any of that color, but if it does, then you're not going to want to dip it right back into your actual uh, Mod Podge container because you don't want to, you know, contaminate everything. And I can actually go over that if I want to because it is matte and it will dry completely flat, which is nice. I can't believe there's actually no green on there. Um, and then I'll wash this out with soap and water because it is a Mod Podge product. Um, and the nice thing about the matte, the super chalky finish, this is chalky finish, not matte, um, is that it's not sticky afterwards. Sometimes your Mod Podge can get sticky. So I've had this stamp set forever. It's a Tattered Angels um, stamp set. And I just, I remembered that I had this really big vintage looking label that said Field Notes on it. And I said, that is perfect. That's what I want. Um, that's what I want in this area here. So it's kind of like a field sketch. I just like that. I'm going to have to slide this down a little bit to be able to stamp that there. And I think I'm going to go in with either an archival or a pigment ink pad just to make sure I get a really um, a nice dark crisp impression. So I decided to go with my VersaFine just because it is a pigment. I know it's going to um, give me a nice crisp image. These are cheap stamps. They're silicone, so sometimes they don't work as well with the dye-based inks like a Ranger Archival. And I'm just setting it right where I want it and pressing 
with firm and even pressure and I like to give my ink chance to go from the stamp onto the paper so I give it you know, I give it a couple minutes there we go so that I really think that looks nice and it's not overwhelming um, and then there's also some uh, flourishes in the set well, you probably all have floor stamps somewhere right because they were like everywhere in the hippest trendiest thing for like years and years um, but there's still a great design element and I think I'm gonna throw some of these in as well and I'm probably gonna go overboard because that's kind of my thing I tend to go overboard but if I really go overboard I can always you know hit it with some gesso or something and um and tone it down that way i mean that's a nice that's a nice thing about mixed media is nobody tells you when you're done you just you're done when you're done you're done when you decide you're done i kind of like that <laughs> it might be a bit much but boy i like it i'm kind of thinking maybe i will put that because this has a pretty dragonfly on there i wasn't going to use it but i was thinking you know yeah, I think that's too big. That is a really big stamp, but I did kind of drop my other stamp there So I'm gonna have to put something there because I just uh, got some ink there by mistake. Happy accidents Just I, I mean I can do a painting that's all just like, you know fixing mistakes there we go and I do Want some more stuff over here. Maybe I'll do this big flourish again repetition repeating your elements is a good idea there we go. I've got my fingers all black. I'm going to try not to, uh, not to get anything I don't want in there. So I like to repeat things a couple different times just to make sure I keep some sort of, um, some sort of flow so things don't seem too random. I like to have my, I like to have these swirls start off the edge there. Okay, so there, I think that just about does it. Um, let's take a look here. We got our stamping up in the corner, very faint. Um, and yeah, you could not do the stamping. You could stop way before that. That's totally fine. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, let, them, let me know in the comments below. Oh my goodness, I feel very out of practice today and I'm not sure exactly why. Probably because this is the first time I've filmed in like five days. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Don't forget to like and subscribe.